Hey cousins, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Chrissy Pips. In today's video, we are going to cover the who, where, what, when, why, and hows of back testing. Okay, this is advanced back testing though, and I'm going to show you an example of how I back test using the FIB strategy that I have learned. Now, as always, if you guys are here, you're interested, so let's get into it. So let's talk about who needs to back test. You, everybody who wants to become a consistently profitable trader and live off of their trading needs to back test the strategy, okay? You already know the what and the where, what is back testing, where it's gonna be on trading view and in a paper journal. Or you can pull up a spreadsheet and create a spreadsheet as well. If you guys are great at spreadsheets, I'd love to hop on a Zoom so you can help me create one specifically for this. So please DM me on Instagram if you want to help. I can use some help too sometimes, right? So DM me, I'd be happy to like take your assistance, okay? Now the next question is when? Well, in my opinion, you should start back testing after you have learned the basics of trading, you have learned the psychology of trading. In my personal opinion, to get a good understanding of the psychology of trading, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas is the top book for that. So if you've not already read Trading in the Zone, I would highly recommend it, okay? Then only after that do you learn a strategy. And after you've learned a strategy, that's when you back test, okay? After you have an edge, you need to figure out if that edge is gonna work. And now let's talk about the why. The reason why you should back test is to test the strategy that you use to make sure it's a good fit for you as a trader, right? Also to find any areas of opportunity in the strategy or any flaws that could be fixed or tweaked or something like that. If you scalp, does the strategy that you've learned work for scalping, right? Is it profitable? Do you have any ideas that you maybe would like to try and implement that could possibly make it more profitable and so on? So that's why you wanna back test. Now, let's get into the how of it all. So how I back test the Fibonacci strategy that I have learned. There's a few steps to it, so go ahead, pause the video, grab pen and paper, and let's get started. So as far as the how goes, you need to make sure that you know the rules of your strategy. Here is a pro tip for you. In the bottom of your trading view, so down here, okay, there's something called text notes. You can actually put notes in showing the rules of your strategy to kind of keep you honest, especially when you're back testing, this is gonna come in handy because you are going to know exactly what to do consistently to keep yourself honest. Like I said before, if you wanna test to see if there's something that you could add to an existing strategy that you're using, you wanna write that down in the text notes section as well and then go ahead and trade specifically or back test specifically using that new thing that you would like to implement. So know the rules of the strategy. The next thing that you wanna do is go to preferably the time frame that you like to enter trades on. Um, for this example, we're gonna say the one hour time frame, and you're gonna go back two years. So for us, we're going to scrunch up this little calendar. Go to the daily to do the two years. And what you're going to want to do is drop a line on the chart on that two-year mark. Okay? And then go ahead and lock that because that's your starting point. Okay? Go down to the one hour. Scroll all the way back until you see that green line. Yep, we're gonna go all the way back two years. Here is our starting point, okay? If you have the pro version of TradingView, you're going to get the opportunity to do the two years. 
if you do not have the pro version you're only going to be able to if you want to use the replay bar use the um the daily time frame to use the replay bar and when you do this you're going to choose the main asset that you trade everybody in the world should know by now the main thing that i trade is acad so when i did my back testing i did it on acad i did it against some other pairs but I like really liked how the results were for ACAB for how I like to trade. Now go ahead and zoom in on your chart. And you guys know I love the FIB strategy, right? So today we're going to talk about the green zone or the 50% zone. Now this is where it gets good and tedious. You're going to take your FIB if you're using FIBs, right? Because this backtesting method is specifically for Fibonacci, okay? You're going to draw out a FIB. And every single time that FIB for sales or buys first, but you cannot do both, you have to pick one. So right now we're going to do sales. Every time we got an entry for a sale, we marked it up and then wrote down our findings. Okay, so confirm that it gave you an entry. Then you're going to do your stop loss. You're going to do what your take profit would have been. You need this information before you can jot down your data. So just for this one swing, your chart should look similar to this if you're using the FIB strategy, okay? Next, let's zoom in and have a conversation. Now for the data that we need to gather. And don't think I'm picking on y'all. I have my team do this too. The reason why I'm doing this video today is because my team, we were talking last night. Um, I do one-on-ones with my team every Friday. And it helps me compile information to kind of make sure that everybody's on the right track and kind of achieving the goals that they want to, right? So one of the things that I seen was that we need to do a little bit of back testing because people need to have a better understanding of what their pair is. So in the 50%, you need to have your entry price, but you also need to jot down the entry candle like the day, okay? When you put a line, a vertical line on the chart, it gives you the day down here. If this was your entry and this was your take profit, you need to draw another line on your take profit as well. And the data that you're going to write down is the date. So on January 6th, on the one hour time frame, you entered a sale from 50%. And understand that a sale from 50% or the green zone is only from the green zone to the yellow zone. If it touches yellow, it's no longer green. Now it's yellow. Okay, so we are only doing 50%. Whatever other zones that you do, you're going to need to do this for each zone. And you're going to need to do buys and sales. So we're going to do this sale. We're going to take out the ruler tool. You're going to go to the top of your where your entry price is. Okay? You're going to draw this over and down to where your exit price is. This tells you it was 24 pips over a period of six bars, which was just six hours for you to get in and out of this trade you need to write these things down. So you're gonna do this until you get to current price action, okay? The reason why you're gonna do this is because you have a few things to write down. So there, here are the questions, take a screenshot, um, write it down, I'll also drop them in the description box of this video, but you wanna find out how many entries for sales did you find? How many pips for each of those you would have received that were winning entries what was the length of time each entry took how many winning entries went into drawdown and if they did go into drawdown how many pips in drawdown did they go how many entries hit your stop loss and then was the market trending or consolidating all of this needs to be written down for back testing every single sale for that two years. It's, it's crazy how much data you need, right? Just every single sale. Did it hit take profit? Yes or no? If yes, how many pips? If no, what was the stop loss amount that was hit in pips that would have been lost for that trade? Um, if yes, was there drawdown? How many pips in drawdown? How many, like, trades were there for sales? 
okay? How many actually won? How many lost, right? If you have multiple take profits, how many hit take profit one? How many hit take profit two, right? All good questions. And then what is the average amount of days that it took? The average amount of trade profit did you have? So how many trades did you find? And then of that of total amount of trades, how many were winning? And then go ahead, figure out your average for me, okay? Um, you're going to do the same thing with your pips. You're going to say, of this two-year span, how many pips were there? You're going to divide that by the number of trades that you took. And that's going to give you your average number of pips for your pair, okay? You're going to do the same thing with the days. How, on average, because we wrote down how, long, how many hours and days each trade took, some of these trades take days before they hit take profit. Some of them, like this one, because you guys know, if we were to draw out our handy dandy trend line, right? We know that we would have lost this sale, right? And this one wouldn't have even been a 50%. So the market changed direction here, right? These sales, we would not count because it's an uptrend. So we would find the next downtrending market, right? And then start the process again. So you're going to erase this information. You're going to draw out another FIB. And then you're going to compile some new data. This was actually a 50% entry. So let's draw our box again, right? From this 50% entry, here's our entry here. Here's our stop loss here. And here is take profit two. If you have presets already together, use your presets. Because what this does is it changes, like mine, it adds the text and the color for the line to the right-hand side of the chart for me. Here's our entry. So let's go ahead and drop that entry for that 50%. And what's the first candle that hit our take profit? This is the first candle that hit our take profit. So we're gonna grab our ruler tool. We're gonna move this information over to give us what we need, right? This was 28 pips for the sale. That's why it has the negative there. Six bars are six hours because each of these bars is one hour, right? So we're gonna write that information down. We're gonna write the date down. You're gonna write all of the swings down in the dates because like I said, you wanna find out Maybe there are certain months that your pair does better than other months. Maybe there are certain months where your pair buys better than it sells. Maybe there are certain months where your pair might be in consolidation, but a certain entry type works very well in that consolidation period, right? So you want to compile all of this information to get a full understanding of your strategy and if it works for you and of the main asset that you trade. Nobody, you can't tell me anything about ACAD, okay? I've, I've done the research. I understand the correlation between the Australian dollar and silver, and I know on average how many pips it throws and things like that, but that's because I backtested. So one of the guys that I learned backtesting from found out that the first iteration of his strategy did not win any sales at all. And it only won 36% of the buys that actually popped up for the strategy. And that still made him profitable overall because of proper risk to reward, blah, 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 right? Um, you also wanna jot down your risk to reward ratios, right? Um, but then because he had that data, he was able to go back through his strategy and make a slight adjustment and fix the issue with not being profitable for his sales. Okay, so imagine what that does. Then that helped him to win more buys as well because of whatever it was in his strategy that he was able to fix that also made it so that he was able to win the sales using that strategy and i'm not saying win every single buy and sell what i'm saying is he did back testing he found out he found a flaw and he was able to make an adjustment 
in that adjustment for not winning any sales to win a few more sales, right? Actually helped him win more buys, which increased his overall win percentage from 36% to about 49%, right? So just back testing, finding that information, making a slight adjustment, made him an even more profitable trader, okay? So I need you to do me a favor. Rewind this video, go back, to maybe you want to do buys now you want to get all of that data so what's the average number of pips the pips after drawdown how many trades was it how many wins how many losses right like many 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 things that you want to write down but even the time of year what does your pair do different times of year it's going to do different things um if you've been trading for a number of years now or you've been trading and you are a new trader, right? Economic conditions over the past few years have changed the landscape of trading. There's been a global pandemic. There's currently a war going on. These things are gonna make the market move a little bit differently than what it has in the past. So if you learn a strategy that was built in the past, you might need to update it, right? Based on current market trends, okay? Like I said, Trading in the Zone is one of the, the best books that you can read to maximize your edge. And what does backtesting do for you, okay? It's going to help you build confidence in trading. How much more confident would you be knowing that your strategy works? How much more confident would you be knowing that you are actually using a strategy that works for how you like to trade, what you like to do on the charts. How much more would you stick to your trading rules if you knew they worked? How much more confident would you be on the charts if you knew your main assets, ins and outs, right? Frontwards and backwards. What if you wanted to maybe change assets? Well, if you backtest your main asset and you backtest the new asset, you can compare data between the two to see if even changing to a different asset is going to make you more profitable, less profitable, or what. Would it be nice to know if your strategy works on that new asset, right? Do the different time frames as well. Maybe you don't want to change your asset, but you want to change the time frame that you enter on. So backtest that too to see if it makes a difference. In my opinion, like I said before, um, you should learn the basics of trading, learn the psychology behind trading, using like trading in the zone is my go-to for that. And then backtest till you find what fits you. Because each time you go through backtesting, you can make slight changes to give you some more data, right? To say, you know what, this needs to be a little bit higher, this needs to be moved. You trade till your heart's content, but after you've backtested and you've gotten that confidence knowing that your strategy works, you'll be, you'll be good to go, right? You won't be jumping around all over the charts and things like that. That is going to wrap us up for today's video. I really hope this helped you guys um, because backtesting is, is what I'm having my team do right now. And I never tell you guys to do anything that I'm not doing. Um, my team and I are back testing. I am back testing a new asset that I like to trade. And my team and I are gonna have a meeting and go over that data and, and compare notes with one another. Hopefully you guys are in a trading community. You have a mastermind that you can do that with as well. Um, if you are not in a community and you would like to maybe join mine, go ahead, reach out to me on Instagram. I'll be happy to answer any questions and things like that that you have as far as joining my community. Um, but as always, I hope you guys got some value from this video. If you did, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next video that I drop. Um, share this content with other people who you think might get some value from it too. But as always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely amazing morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.